All right, so this is XBesh. We're gonna jump right in. This is a lovable, like a, a trickle AI, a bolt, not new type of alternative where we can build full-fledged either websites or online cloud applications or even interactive games and so forth with this application. You can use it a lot like you can with like ChatGBT, Gemini, and Claude. You basically tell it what you want it to create for you, and then it's gonna go out there and do all the coding for you for your application or your website. So really cool stuff. We can go into the light version right over here, which is neat. I like the dark mode. And then I haven't seen this before. This is really neat. We can actually go through the colors. This is, you can actually modify the dashboard of what your tool is gonna look like while you're using it. I'm just gonna take you through these colors real quick. And you can see a couple of different versions of blue and a couple of different versions of purple. Here's a red color. And then there's another kind of green color right there. I'm gonna go with the dark right there because I just think it looks super crisp and clean. Now, before we go and create another tool, we've already created a couple. We'll go and look at those. I've already been using the application so I can make a lot tidier review for you in this particular case. We're going to go over here and click on the hamburger and you can see we've already created a couple projects. I have connected this to Superbase. It does connect to Superbase and you can deploy this with a couple different applications as well. At any point, if you are interested in this, the first link below, go check it out. There are going to be upsells. There is a bundle that's quite expensive, but that's for people that are serious and want the, the full-fledged application at a, a, like an unlimited type use basis. If you're going to be an agency, create these applications, go out there and sell them and so forth. So link will be below. So let's go and take a look at this advanced tool that I tried to create a little while ago. There's a lot of features and coding. You'll definitely see it's even connected super base. We have testimonials. This one, I told it to build a full fledged landing page and tool that's going to be basically a YouTube creator. It came up with the idea Title Genius, create viral YouTube titles that convert. Title Genius analyzes top performing YouTube channels and generates 20 unique scroll stopping title ideas tailored to your niche. Boost your views, engagement, and subscriber count with titles that actually work. This is a tool that I actually do want to create, but it's actually, this is where kind of the rubber meets the road, where I run into issues with every app, including Lovable, you know, like the king of these apps right now. I have tried to do something, and the moment that you start implementing a web scraping and, and, and uh, you know, YouTube or Google APIs and so forth, it starts getting more complex for these types of automated tools. It can build a U interface, it has a good understanding of what you're wanting it to do, but then it can't really actually implement without getting a dev involved. And so I wanted to test this one out. It didn't get it right, you know, the, the first time or once we start trying to go scrape URLs or anything like that or get data, then it kind of struggled. So that's not any different than the other applications. They're not able to do that too. A Lovable really isn't able to do that too. It's It, it will create very simple apps for us. So we'll go check that out. Just note, this is, if you have something more advanced that's going to require getting and scraping data and doing stuff with that, it's, it's going to be pretty advanced, probably too advanced for this AI right here but it will get you really close but then if you're, you either need to have the knowledge to implement that part yourself, or you will have to bring in a dev to, uh, at that point to, to, to make that happen. So there's a lot going on with this, but this is what this app looks like. And you have all these different views. We can actually look at what it looks like on iPads and on an iPhone and so forth. I have it in land, landscape or desktop mode. We can also come over here and go into the full screen mode. So this is actually what it built for us right here. And it builds a full landing page. Here's the features right here. We could change anything we want right over here. This part is kind of the easy part. I will say that what I did um, was I went, let me just kind of back out of this real quick. I'll uh, show you the landing page and then I'll show you. So here's the pricing. Everything just looks aesthetically like you would expect it to look nice, crisp, clean. I like the colors and so forth. And a note looking at this, what this looks like. Okay. And then what I did was I'm going to back out of this. I'm going to actually go over here and show you what I did. I went over to one of 10. I took a, a full screenshot of their home page. Let me zoom in and show you the colors are blue. This is kind of what the page looks like. And then what I did was when we went in here to create this, I actually uploaded that 
I uploaded an image of that and said, hey, I want it to look like this, build a landing page, and then here's what I want the tool to do. And it was basically able to do that. It created a version of this right here for us. I don't know why it's like in a kind of a gray mode right here. I'm gonna go back and just click and re-preview if I can push the refresh button. So there's our landing page and you can see that the home, this actually was duplicated. I was able to come in here and tell it, hey, you duplicated the, the, the heading or the hero area. And then it, so it got rid of that. And then when I clicked on features or pricing, nothing happened. It didn't take me to those sections. And so now they fixed that as well. It takes you to the preview. If we click on pricing, it takes us to the pricing section right there. So all that stuff kind of checks out. It does a good job with that. I don't know what it does when it, we try for free. Okay, yeah. So this is the part where this is the inside of the application after someone actually signs up, we would need to go in there and implement, hey, implement a user login with, with Google or something like that. It would go ahead and do that. So you have to kind of know that it, right off the bat is going to create kind of like a mock-up for you. And then there's going to be a lot of other things you need to do in order to actually turn this into a real application. I'm just showing you aesthetically what you could actually create over here. And then once, like if you click the launch app, it's also going to do this for for us right here as well. Now what I did was I came over here and I just grabbed learn wire right here. I'm going to copy that, go back over. And then basically you would put in a YouTube channel URL and you would say generate titles. And then I had it with advanced prompting 70 characters or less, you know, kind of viral type titles. And you can see they're all 70 characters or less and it gave us 20 titles. It does give us a copy feature right here. It does save your channels, previous channels as well. Really cool stuff. Now, so the, the theory and the mock-up actually passed the test. It did a really good job with this. It did work through some errors that I already had. So I had some errors. It was able to fix those errors. But the next step for an application like this to where I could actually go out there and charge $20 a month for it, it needs to be able to scrape actual data and so forth and then do something with that data. That's what makes a software really good, right? To save people time. If you can find a way that is valuable and to save people time that those are the best applications, right? That's why we're willing to pay for an application. So that would be something that I would need to learn how to do, which is to connect it to Supervase, get the logins, be able to actually have the application use a Google API or YouTube API to scrape actual channel data um, and then bring that in here. And then also we would need to go and deploy this. Looks like there's a, a Nellify account, uh, Ver Vercel. Now a Vercel, I believe is the developers that I had working on a software, they were using Vercel as well. So that is, I think a, a popular one that, that developers use. And then there look, it looks like they have cloud for Cloudflare coming soon as well. You can also just grab the, the entire code and then go and, and deploy it yourself, but it will get you that far. Now, what I did was I came back over here to the main page, and this is where I went and clicked this clipboard right over here, and this is where I went and I uploaded that image I was telling you about. So you can actually take a screenshot of a, of a website or an application or a dashboard that you're looking for, go ahead and provide that data to XBesh and say, hey, I want it to look like this, and it will actually use that in its design when it designs. Really cool. We can also click this and microphone, and we can basically just talk and say what we want it to do. That's really cool. And then they have all these examples over here. So for the next example I'm gonna show you is that I went over to the example templates and I just clicked on a to-do app. Build a to-do app in React using Tailwind with local storage and dark mode support. So really cool. I like that it's using React and Tailwind. Those are really popular design models and so forth. Most development and coders right now are building all their applications out in React and Tailwind and so forth. Definitely React, I know that. Now what we can do is come over here and just go in and see what it built for us. Now I can say that the YouTube one was a lot more advanced of a, and it was a lot larger prompt. And so what I suggest is that was a, a lot longer, like a full paragraph. And it kind of struggled. It did take like 15 minutes or so to actually create the application. And then we also ended up with some errors. So what I've learned is you want to actually just say, hey, build me a YouTube app that creates titles, blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to start doing one-off sentences and start correcting the app and massaging the coding, if you will. That's the best way to do this because when you come out with a really big prompt, these tools are just, it's just too much to put all in at once, if that makes sense. So 
Try to get your idea in one or two sentences. That's kind of a, a quick tip for you. But this is the, in this case, we didn't want it to build a landing page. We could go down here and say, build a landing page and it will do that. But we just want to see what it can actually build for us for a simple, simple task flow app. There's your dark mode and there's your light mode. Let's go with the dark mode right here. And you can go with new, add task. So, you know, shopping, and then you would just push the plus button there. And then we'll go over here and we'll say homework. And then you can push enter. It's going to, you know, so the, the enter key worked, or you can push the plus right there. And then you can delete, you can edit. That's really cool. It did all the basic functionality. The it's modern, you know, UI design looks really good. And then we can say over here, you know, we have a blog post that we need to get out. And then, you know, we need to we need to work out. So we have our tasks that we've added. We have active and completed. So let's just say we got our homework done and we got our shopping done. And then we can go ahead and clear those. We can look at only active because there's only two left. We can look at the completed ones that we have. We can look at all and then we can clear the completed right there. So super easy. Of course, if you wanted to make this really cool, you would actually go in down here and start adding more features like save features, add a little calendar, add a weekly calendar, those are the kind of things that start making your tool more valuable that someone actually possibly would want to pay for, right? So it passed with flying colors on this exact strategy right over here. Again, let's go and just do a live test real quick. So if I came over here and I just want to click this and, and I want to allow them, I'm going to say something in it. Create a simple note taking application where users can click a button and add new notes and then push the save button. And then it also will save all of the, the notes in a history type format. Okay, so we went ahead and pushed enter. Now we could connect it to Supabase. You would go into Supabase and you would create a new project and then it actually will allow you to go and connect your Supabase account. I should have showed you that. I'll show you that in just a minute. But right now it's actually going to create this right in front of us. It should be able to create something really simple like this very quickly. You can see that it is just going at it right now. You can see all the coding, the main, the index, and it's probably not gonna do all this right here because we're not asking it to to do a full fledged everything right here. It's going to get us just a nice mock up of our tool. We didn't tell it to build a landing page and everything, but you can actually build out an entire SaaS business with a landing page, with user login, with Stripe payment, connecting it to Superbase and deploy it within the app. Definitely not going to be able to show you all that, but right here while talking, you can see that it just created our simple note taking app. Now we didn't tell it what we want it to look like. Now we can go over here and say change button color, you know, change blue button to bright orange. So we can actually tell it what we want it to do. It will go out there and it will make these changes for us. All right, you can see that it is generating a response for us. We did have one error. All I did was just push refresh on the page, went and put my statement back in, my edit, and then it went ahead and said that it will update the blue buttons to bright orange. Let me know, let me make those changes now. It is making that change right here in app.tsx. And you can see that it's making those changes and it should be finished. It says that it is finished thinking. We should be able to click on the preview button over here. And now it changed that blue button to a bright orange. And now if we wanted to add a note, we do have a history button over here. There's no history. Let's go add a note. And here's the box right here. We can actually tell it to highlight the box right here uh, and kind of make it obvious where we should type but I don't think that's too big of a deal, but you can see that it's just very modern, the buttons and UI, really good stuff. It also is gonna note when we actually put this note in here, a new note, and then we can put a new line on this note, and then we can just go ahead and save the notes right there. It might, let's see if it actually has a hard time saving this because, let's see, I'm gonna go back over and we're gonna click on, so the history button's gone. We're gonna click on the history there and then can we get into that? Okay, restore. So we're getting this error right over here because I think that this is because we did not connect this to Supabase. I'm gonna go and show you how to do that now. So it's not gonna let us do this because we, let's see, it is saying note saved successfully. Okay, so let's add another note. New note, that's number two and I'm gonna save the note right there. Okay, so that's actually is working. The dummy version of this is working. We can go and look at history. We have all these notes right over here, but we're really not going to need that history button if we have you know, the section right over here. So I'm just gonna add some, some more notes. Save, 
We're gonna add another note, save notes. So you have all of your simple notepad right over here. You can also go and trash a note. You can trash this first note right here. So it's fully functional. You have that history button right over there as well. So a simple note taking app right there. Finally, I'm just gonna go click on this. So we have YouTube title tool. When I did that YouTube title tool, I put my whole prompt in right here. I clicked this and we are connected to Subabase. And what you would do is you would click in here and I created a project in Subabase. And that's where I was actually to, able to select this. And then it, that actually connects your app to Subabase. So it's gonna allow you to, to actually save a, a database because that's what Subabase is to save your database. So this is Xbesh. This is definitely one of the more advanced softwares that I've seen. This is actually a JVZoo product and this is actually looking really, really good. So if you wanna go and pick this up, there'll be a first link below, go check it out. This is Xbesh. Let me know if you watch the whole video below in the comments and let me know if you think this is a pretty dang cool tool. I'll see you in the next video.